God bless you and it's a pleasure in having you once again join us in the study of the Word of God. You know, today's title is called Lower Your Guard and You Will Fall Into Sin. And this title is taken from the series um, uh, that we've been doing for quite a while now called The Heroes Hall of Fame, series part 22. So if you join us for the first time, welcome. And we're looking at the book of Hebrews. We're studying from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. We're looking at the heroes of faith. We've talked about Abel, Enoch, so now we are now on the life of Noah. And we've done several weeks now on the life of Noah. So if you've missed any of these messages, which are informative, instructive, and transforming, you can always catch it online at our YouTube channel, um, Noah's Ark Sanctuary Church. And you can always subscribe. So whenever a message, new message comes in, you'll be notified. So, previously, um, learning from the life of Noah, we discovered a Christian is the one who fears God. And a Christian is one who, um, who does not only preach righteousness, but lives righteously. We also learn a Christian is one who stands alone in, in the midst of unrighteousness. And we also learn that a Christian is the one who receives grace from God. The Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of God. And we know that the Bible says, as Christians in Ephesians 2, 89 we are saved by grace you know true faith not of ourselves you know uh, it's not of works it is the gift of god so that no one will boast so that means we're not saved by the works of our hands we're not saved by the works of righteousness but we are saved by grace alone to do good works in ephesians 2 10 says we are god's creation we are god's workmanship we are god's masterpiece you know, created by God in, in Christ unto good works, to do good works. That is, those good works are called the works of faith, and those works of faith are not initiated by us. It's not something we, uh, we, are, we motivate ourselves to do. It's something we hear God speak to us. You know, the Bible said, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we hear from God through the hearing of faith and we hear what God wants us to do and we step out in faith to do it. Uh, for example, we learn from Noah. Noah being divinely warned, okay, um, and moved in fear, you know, to build the ark of God. You know, he had the word of God. He was in a position to hear. That's what we say. We need to tune to spiritual things. The Bible says where your, your treasure is, that your heart will be also if it's spot, if it's... Um, um, pleasure, you know, it, you know, there you have it with money, there you have it be. But as Christians, we're encouraged to turn our, uh, to turn our hearts into spiritual things, which is prayer, um, the word of God, and fellowship. Because through those means, we'll be able to hear God's word. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, and then we'll be able to do the works of righteousness. You know, in Psalm 4 5, it says, Offer, in New King James Version, it says, um, Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Those are the works of faith that we hear God speak to our hearts and prompts them to do, and we obey. Okay, but today we're going to learn something new uh, about the life of Noah. And it's very, very important because you know they um the old testament saints are an examples for us and the bible says in romans 15 4 that whatever is written is written for our example so that we can learn from them okay so again let's remind ourselves with that today lower your guard and you fall into sin so what does lower your guard mean it means to um be relaxed to be complacent instead of being serious being watchful being careful being alert and vigilant and the result is that if we are not watchful or vigilant or or careful you know it will result in two serious consequences which we are going to learn from um noah so i'm going to read from the book of genesis um and chapter 9 20 to 27 we're going to read an account of noah's life and what to learn from noah uh, so if you've got your Bibles, Genesis 9, I read from 
verse 20 to 27. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, After the flood, Noah began to cultivate the ground and he planted a vineyard. One day he drank some wine he had, he had made and he became drunk and lay naked inside his tent. And the father of Canaan saw that his father was naked and went outside and told his brothers. Then Shem and Japheth took a robe, held it over their shoulders, and back into the tent to cover their father. As they did this, they looked the other way so they would not see him naked. When Noah woke up from his stupor, he learned what um, his youngest son had done. Then he cursed Canaan, the son of Ham. May Canaan be cursed, may he be the lowest of servants to his relatives. Then Noah said, May the Lord God of Shem be blessed. I may Canaan be his servant. May God expand the territory of Japheth. May Japheth share the prosperity of Shem. And may Canaan be his servant. Okay, so the, let's look at what we can learn from this message. The first thing we need to learn is that scriptures can be trusted. You know, scriptures just spoke about Noah being righteous, being blameless in his generation. Um, you know, in Genesis 6, 6 9, the Bible said Noah was blameless was righteous you know but the bible also spoke about its flaws its defects you know and that tells us that scriptures can be trusted that tells us that the bible is an honest book because many people sometimes write the autobiography autobiography they don't mention the ugly side of their lives but the bible is an honest book that speaks about both the good and bad of people okay so the scriptures can be trusted from book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. The word of God is infallible, okay, and authentic. Now, what um, people, for example, the worthy man, the man of the world, may call um, um, the blemish um, of Noah, the, his defect, his mistake. You know, the Bible say we will not want to use the word sin. The modern man does not want, does not like the term sin. It's not part of their book vocabulary because they claim um, not to be um, religious. Uh, they claim to be certificated. You know, they're a modern man. They don't believe in the God thing. So the word sin does not apply in the dictionary. So, um, like what happened to Noah getting drunk? They call it. Um, lack of discretion, a moment of weakness, a blemish or defect. But the Bible calls it sin. Okay, the Bible calls it sin, and that cannot change. The word of God cannot be broken. And um, that defect, you know, um, um, is called sin. And the Bible says, All have sinned. Okay, we're all born in sin. Uh, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But thank God. For his grace. The Bible says, No, I found grace in the eyes of God. And today we're also enjoying the grace of God, which came through Jesus Christ. Amen. So, another thing we want to learn apart from scriptures being, scriptures being fair and can be trusted, we also learn this that saved people can fall. You see, godly people can mess up, anyone can mess up. Because you see, there are some who think, you know, for example, if you are preaching to them about giving their life to Christ, about repenting of their sins, they tell you, well, you are preaching to the converted. This is even including Christians um, who are not saved. They say, well, you are preaching to the converted. Um, they say, well, I'm not a sinner. Uh, because they think of sin in terms of major things like being a drug addict, an alcoholic, um, committing sins like adultery. You know, they feel they're okay, they are moral, they don't need um, they don't need saving. But as we know, the Bible labels everyone as sin. They uh, in a sense admit that they do make mistakes and they say at least they're human, you know. Um, but they never want to admit they are sinners. But the Bible does say again that all everyone has fallen short of the glory of God. We fall in short of glory of God in our mind and in our body. When we compare ourselves to the first man in the Garden of Eden, he was perfect in his spirit, righteous. He was perfect in his mind, in his ability to think, to rationalize. He was perfect in his body. There's no sickness, no disease, no pain. But when sin came in, his mind was darkened. Our mind today 
spots out evil the imagination of our heart is evil continually the, the Bible says um, that human nature that sinful nature is enmity is us that towards God and we've all fallen short uh, I'm sure we cannot agree and uh, um, not all our thoughts are God centered or God honoring so we've all shot in falling short of the glory of God in our hearts and in our body we fall sick we have defects here and there everybody has got a weakness in their body so that's not God's standard but Jesus is the perfect um, the perfect figure perfect form of a human being perfect in spirit mind and body and also even though you're a Christian the Bible does not teach sinless perfection okay because there's some Christians who misunderstand to preach scriptures maybe buried in um, for example, 1 John 3, if we go to 1 John chapter 3, uh, and that's from verse 6, read, anyone who continues to live in him will not sin, but anyone who keeps sinning does not know him or understand who he is. And some people may, who um, hang on to that verse and say, well, if you're a Christian, if you're born again, you cannot sin. But we know that this is not true. We come back to 1 John 3, 6. But let's go back to first john um, chapter one and see uh, what john tells us there in first john chapter one verse five we read this is the message we heard from jesus and now declare to you god is light and in him is no darkness at all so we align if we say we have fellowship with god but god living in spiritual darkness we are not practicing the truth but if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus Christ's Son cleanses us from our sin. At least as we are worshipping to God, as you are listening to me right now, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from our sin. Why? Because, you know, we've been stained by sin in the world. And when we come before God, we're standing on holy ground and we come by the blood of Jesus. That's the only way we don't come in our righteousness. We always come into his presence by the blood of jesus just like in the wilderness the church in the wilderness the tabernacle of moses before they come to god they must come in the morning even with the shedding of the blood so without the shedding of blood there's no forgiveness of sins so if we read verse 8 of verse john 1 he said if we claim we have no sin we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth but if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness cleanse us from all wickedness if we claim we have not sinned we are calling god a liar and showing that the world has no place in our hearts so that's very clear you know that being a christian does not mean you do not sin and you know you may not do the major sins but there are those sins of omission or even sins that we come without even knowing and again if we go back to first john um, chapter um, 3 verse um, um, from verse 6 again let's read anyone who continues to live in him will not sin that this seems like a contradiction to what he said earlier but when we read further what we, we we get the full picture that he wasn't contradicting himself now if we read verse 7 they are children don't let anyone deceive you about this when people do what is right it shows that they are righteous even as Christ is righteous but when people keep on sinning I want us to listen I keep on sinning it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning but the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil now verse 9 those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them so they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God and that's the key verse okay now those who are born of God does not make a practice so what John is saying here is that there are two two ways here there's the, the, the true Christian may experience occasional acts of sin may fall into occasional acts of sin okay but a false Christian an unbeliever lives and practices sin lives an habitual lifestyle of sin and again when we look at the way they react to sin when they fall into sin you know when a christian falls into sin as the bible says a just man falls um seven times okay uh, proverbs 14 16 but you know the lord raises him up but uh, uh, when, when the just man falls, when the righteous man, righteous man falls, he is humbled by his sin. He is, he is troubled. He feels convicted. He feels, com he feels, you know, there's an awareness of his sin. He, he feels guilty that he wants to go to God and say, God, be merciful unto me, 
a sinner, you know. But for the unbeliever, you know, or the fake Christian, you know, when they sin, they don't even feel any conviction. You know, they, they, they justify their sin, they rationalize, they make an attempt to make excuse for what they do for their behavior. They don't own up to their sin, their, their conscience is hardened. Okay, so let's take up biblical examples of believers who lower their guard. You know, we're talking about lowering your guard before you make you fall into sin. And what happened is that Noah happened to lower his guard. You know, he became careless and he fell into sin. So let's look at other examples in the Bible that attested this fact that when you lower your guard, you will fall into sin. The fact, uh, the example is a case study of Noah walk, after working God for 600 years. He got carried away. And that tells us that even though you've worked for a long, to, with the Lord for a long time, that's not guarantee you will not fall if you, do, if you lower your guard. You know, um, you know, mature age does not guarantee security from falling if you don't hold up your guard. Okay? Okay, let's look at David as an example. In Second Samuel 11, David dropped down his guard when it was established and if you see second samuel 11 verse 1 to 4 we read uh, the account of david in, in verse 1 of second samuel 11 in the spring of the year when king normally going to war david sent joab and the, and the israelite army to fight the ammonites they destroyed the ammonite army and laid siege to the city of rabbah however david stayed behind in jerusalem Late one afternoon after his midday rise, David got out of bed and was walking on the roof of the palace and he looked over the city. He noticed a woman of unusual beauty taking a bath. He sent someone to find out who she was and he was told she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah, the Etite. Then David sent messengers to get her and when she came to the palace, he slept with her. She had completed her purification rites after having a menstrual period. Then she returned home. Now, we see here David lowering his guard. How, you know, he was supposed to be in battle. Uh, the Bible says when kings go to battle, but he didn't go. The Bible says, however, he stayed behind and slept instead. And as a result, fell into sin of adultery. Another example is Solomon. Again, what I was saying earlier, the age does not guarantee you will not fall. We all need to be on our toes from beginning to the end. Solomon also messed up when he was established and he did it in his old age. You know, having even had an encounter with God twice. In 1 Kings 11 tells us the story. Uh, 2 Samuel 11 tells us the story about his dad. Now, 1 Kings 11 tells the story about Solomon. Uh, the Bible says, 1 Kings 11 from verse 3, that Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines, and they turned his heart from the Lord. Uh, and in Solomon, verse 4, in Solomon's old age, they turned his heart to worship other gods instead of being completely faithful to the Lord his God as his father David had been. And I'm going to jump to verse 9. It says, The Lord was angry with Solomon for his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. He had warned him, Solomon specifically about worshiping other gods, but Solomon did not listen to the Lord's command. Solomon was complacent, was established, and um, turned his back on the Lord and fell into sin. Okay, let's go back to the New Testament now. Look at an example in the New Testament. Uh, we find this in Matthew 26, um, 34 to 35, and this is um, talking about Peter. You know, Peter was boastful and overconfident. We read this Matthew 26, verse 34. And Jesus was saying, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny three times that you ever know me. And Peter replied, No, Peter insisted, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the other disciples vowed the same. Then comes the time for prayer. Matthew 26, 40, 41. Then he returned to the disciples because Jesus called them, you know, to pray with him, to stand with him. Uh, but when he, when he came, he saw them asleep. He said to Peter, couldn't you watch even one an hour? You know, Peter was the, in the forefront. So he called Peter, you know, you are the one I see you will die with me. Why can't you even wait for him for an hour? He said, keep watch and pray 
so that you will not give in into temptation for the spirit is willing but the body is weak and that implies that again watch you know the opposite of lowering your guard is watching if you if you are not if you if you are watching you not lower your guard but if you are sleeping you're lowering your guard so Christ said be watch be alert be vigilant why because if you don't the tempter will overcome you the devil will overcome you and you will fall into temptation and we see we, we um, in Matthew 26 we saw the results Matthew 26 25 said Peter swore it costs on me if if I am lying I don't know the man and immediately the rooster crowed suddenly Jesus words flashed through Peter's mind before the rooster crows you will deny three times that you even know me and he went away weeping and bitterly so Peter fell into sin because he lowered it down this guy so now the question is for us today how do we know we're learning our God how do we know I'm learning my God I'm relaxing I'm getting complacent I'm not as vigilant and serious in my faith as I ought to how do I know well like the disciples and King David when we ought to be praying you know when we ought to be praying I am sleeping when I ought to be praying I'm sleeping no like Bible say King David ought to be in battle you know to fight the Lord's battle today the Bible says we're not fighting against flesh and blood for spiritual weakness that I place the supreme places and powers so we fight we wrestle in prayer but David needed him to as the pastor as the shepherd to lead his flock into battle you know and decide to take rest to sleep and um, yeah uh, you know um, he fell into sin and again looking at Peter and the three other disciples that went with Jesus Peter no two disciples James and John they were supposed to be praying but they were tired they fell asleep and um, they didn't receive the strength to stand when temptation came so how do I know I'm lowering my guard when instead of praying I'm doing something else I'm sleeping or doing something else or when I begin to miss my time with God in reading and meditation and the Word of God you know um, when I say well some people say well I've read the Bible anyway you know we talk to some people say I've read the Bible I know the Bible but they don't read it every day and uh, they, they tell you uh, they've read the Bible but the same people you tell them, okay if you've eaten a certain kind of food if you go back to the unnatural life we, we almost every week we repeat eating the same kind of food it, we don't say well well I've ate this food before what should I I don't need to I know about, I know it tastes I know it feels in my mouth so um, why should I but no we eat every day to nourish our body same thing with the word of God it's called the spiritual food for our soul Jesus said not only by bread alone but by every word that proceeds we need to feed on the word of God every day to nourish our spirits amen Quite because every day we get battered by lies so we need to replace it with truth amen and how do I know I'm my God when I ought to be in fellowship when I don't re regularly attend the house of God when I don't really attend fellowship I miss out you know the Bible says in Hebrews 10 25 do not forsake the gathering of saints together gathering of believers together okay or oh, when I ought to be a public witness for Jesus Christ you know I, I become a, I, I am a silent witness I don't speak out like Peter you know when Peter was called to um, um, stand up for Jesus he said no no I don't know him you know we deny in our walks in our actions in our attitude we don't want people to know we are christians in like last we were saying that you know i'm i gave an example of myself being ashamed to pray um over my meal in the restaurant you know looking at who is watching but you know and I, god had to challenge me i'm not ashamed of him so we need to stand and we need to not allow the world to squeeze us to to tell us no you can't speak about jesus no you can't mention jesus no you can't say I, i'm blessed you can't can say god bless me to the rise of my sign i know what i believe i'm not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of god and salvation okay we should not be ashamed of the gospel of christ so we need to realize that the christian race is not it's not just about starting well you know some people started well like jesus gave the parable of the sower you know um the the the, the seed that fell upon um the, the hard ground where there were stones and um, 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 they didn't have enough um, 
um, soil so they kind of try for a while and then wither because there's no depth to um, to the plant and uh, Jesus said these are people who because of trouble and persecution they fall away and then there's one that fell among the thorns and there's a case of life the deceitfulness of riches the anxieties kind of choke and they become um, fruitful they started well with joy but they couldn't complete so it's not just about starting you know everybody starts and see they're Christian but some you know um, they fall away that's what Jesus said by their fruits you shall know them so the Christian race is like a marathon and um, we all let's pray that and I pray that we all finish uh, um, the race I pray we all finish the race well the Bible says um, in Ecclesiastes 7 8 then King James Version better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof better is the end of thing and the New Living Translation produces this way finishing is better than starting okay finish is better than starting so the Bible wants us that let him who thinks so we need to be careful here but I say let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall that's first Corinthians 10 12 um, Nicky James Version let him not KGV let him who thinks he stands take heed we all this is a warning for, for every one of us don't think well I'm arrived you know uh, and don't fall into sin of complacency that way you feel self-satisfied you know you don't need not, nothing uh, and this is the, I like the way the message Bible puts this verse of first Corinthians 10 12 it says don't be so na naive and self-confident you are uh, you're not exempt uh, you could fall flat on your face and that's the key you see men of God or teachers or deacons you know or, or bishops or ministers fall into sin you know uh, fall flat so the Bible so it says here you are not exempt you, 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 can, you could fall flat on your face as easy as anyone else so forget about self-confidence it is useless cultivate God confidence amen again I'm reading Luke 21 34 he says watch out don't let your hearts be dulled by carousing and drunkenness and by the worries of this life don't let that day catch you on our ways okay so how do we take heed that's first Corinthians 10 12 how do we watch out so that we don't lower our guards okay let's look at what the Bible says regarding those again in Ezekiel um, 15 um, 49 to 50 it talks about the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah that their, their sin was pride fullness of bread you know um, abundance of food you know uh, idleness you know so they, they, they fell into sin you know the Bible says an idle man is devil is the devil's workshop so we must be on guard against these four strongholds haughtiness pride laziness um, heaviness and weariness you know um, we should we should be careful of self-confidence we should be careful of laziness inactivity not doing not involving ourselves in spiritual things uh, we should be uh, also be on guard against heaviness not allowing ourselves to be overwhelmed with worries and cares and uh, and depression we should be um, be on guard against weariness and it's been bogged down by a workload and tax that it drains off of our strain that we don't have time for spiritual things because you know we 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 we, we, uh, we, um, we will fail we will um you know um be at loss if we fail to connect with god now because this spiritual struggle this for spiritual struggles haughtiness heaviness weariness you know laziness can knob our hands and feet from running effectively the race of god so the bible says you turn with me to hebrews chapter 12 chapter 13 this time reading from the new king james version it says therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees verse 13 and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated but rather be healed so like an athlete i begin to discipline myself okay i say to myself enough of inactivity i pick up myself shake myself off you know uh, shake away inactivity enough of complacency 
yeah, enough of mediocrity, enough of wrong diet, eating the wrong food, enough of negativity in my life, confess negativity, saying, well, I can't, or oh, I'm tired, you know, I confess the word of God that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, um, I, run, I, I, I run with a fellow pastor um, five kilometers once a week. And um, we met by chance and, and um, I was talking that I'd do a bit of past exercises. Just um, we run like for 3K um, three times a week. But, you know, he, um, he said, okay, why don't we run together? And uh, we picked a time and, and, um, and usually I run 3K. But when we started, you know, running I, f I just felt a bit weak and tired i felt like giving up but again one mind is saying to me don't confess your tiredness don't confess you know i just kept going by faith my body was saying give up you know my body was crying out stop stop but i just kept going you know and i and also kept praying but and god gave me the strength i didn't know where the strength conquered it's like i, I was stronger finishing and starting and um Okay, how did that come about? How was I able to run 5K that, that comes from with, you know, um, one personal prayer life, okay, personal prayer life, and then fellowship, you know, we run together, so we push, we motivate each other. There are times I feel like giving up about because I seem, you know, I'm going ahead, you know, I, I don't want to kind of let him down, I don't want to be the one to say, well, you know, so that kind of motivated me, and sometimes I see him, you know, he's struggling, but because he looks at me and says, well, I don't want to give up now, my, you know, my brother is running. So, and that's how we push that, and that's what fellowship does. Fellowship strength is one another. If you are on your own, you are bound to fall, you are bound to be complacent, you are bound to lower your guard. But when you have people, when you're in fellowship, you know, you encourage, you, 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 you encourage, you are motivated, okay? So, do you have Jesus in your life? Because if you don't, you cannot win the crown of righteousness. You see, without Jesus, you can't do nothing. So you, maybe you listen, listen to me right now. You're not born again. You don't have a relationship with Christ. Or you do not know if you were to die today, you go to heaven. You see, if you're not sure, you can't be sure today. Because, you know, some people say, well, how can we? Nobody knows. The point is you don't want to get to heaven's gate and hear that, sorry, you know, um, we are banished to hell. That, and they'd be too late for repentance. So the Bible says in First John that put John said, I've written to you that you may know you have eternal life. So you might know, I know I have eternal life. And if you don't, how can I have eternal life? How can you have eternal life? The Bible says, Whosoever will call upon the name of God shall be saved. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So if you will believe today, that, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died on the cross for your sins and rose, rose up again from the dead, you will be saved. So, if God is speaking to you and you want to give your life, you want to be sure if you were to die, you could heaven, why don't you pray this prayer with me? You know, we, we get this eternal life by calling upon the name of the Lord and, and, and believing in our heart and confessing. Our confession seals our faith. So, uh, if you'd like to do that, why don't you pray with me this prayer? Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess that I have sinned against you in my thoughts, in my words and actions. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he rose again from the dead. I receive him into my life. I thank you, Father, for saving me. Thank you for making me your child today. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you said that prayer, you know, me with all your heart, say, brother, welcome into God's family. Your name is written in God's book of life. You're a child of God. You have eternal life, not temporary, but eternal life. You're a child of God. And then now you need to grow. As, as you, you've had to the teaching to be yourself on the Word of God. Uh, if you don't have a church, find a place where the Bible is taught, where the people live, what they preach. 
and um, yeah call upon God in prayer then to talk to your Heavenly Father so and if you're a Christian I hope this encourages you as well that we need to stand firm we need to stand strong we need to be on our guard and not allow anything bog us down and affect us from concentrating on the Lord amen so God bless you for watching and don't forget to share this message so that others can hear and be saved and if you're not subscribed to our channel please do subscribe and um, yeah God bless you for watching and I hope to see you next week and do not forget one thing we require in this ministry to support us is that you lift us up in prayer so god bless you see you next time